Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with, if I remember correctly, part six of the Card Makers Academy. I'm going to remove my notes here because I keep notes wherever I go. And for this one, we are going to talk about embossing folders. Embossing folders have been around for a while. They are a plastic bound on one side um, item that you slip your cardstock in, you close it, and then you roll it through your die cutting machine based on its sandwich that it calls out for. Now, the reason why I say it that way is because these were the beginnings. And just like with everything, which is wonderful, it grows, it expands, we morph into so much more. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have the correct timeline, um, meaning specific times, which I won't have specific times, but in the orders, but I think I'm pretty close. <clears throat> I also believe that embossing folders are one of those items in the paper crafting world that sometimes get pushed aside. Um, they're forgotten about. Um, again, we put our papers in, we roll it through, we get awesome, wonderful texture from those papers. Today, we are into coloring techniques, um, fancier uh, techniques with specialized inks, um, coloring mediums, stamping items, um, using our dye inks, and I'm not saying that's bad, but these are something that are at a great price point. Matter of fact, a wonderful price point, and you can get beautiful results for your backgrounds. So if you're that crafter, these are perfect for the crafter that just likes to work with pattern paper to that crafter that likes to add the details of all of the colors and all of those other techniques that are out there. These are perfect for both. So let's continue to talk about it and then I'll show, um, I'll pull my machine up here just a little bit and, and work with it. Now I do have a Spellbinder 6 and again, your sandwich may be different for the system that you have. Let's start at the beginning. So Daris was one of the beginning companies and basically it's these types of embossing folders. They're thin. I'm not sure if you can see how thin that is. When I close it, it's not, you know, it's, it's close. It's just, you know, larger than a 120 pound piece of paper, um, but they do give great results, but again, very simple and usually at least in my spell binders i can set this down i set down a um, embossing folder plate that they have um, and i think a clear plate and i just roll that through and i have that set these came in many many images you can have this one here is lacy edges this one here are swirls even fun stampers journey you can get them with script different geometric designs and that's how they were in the big in the beginning mainly those geometric designs circles rectangles squares ovals lines wood grains um, anything like that that's how they started now also in the beginning spellbinders had what was called uh, the possibilities or possibilities. All right, so M possibilities. Isn't that cute? And what this is, this is a double layer type. I do not, I do not believe these are available anymore. Okay, so again, I'm showing you all the different types. Please, nobody holler at me because I'm showing something that's no longer available. I'm just saying, <laughs> somebody did that in my last video that aired. <laughs> So this here has two different designs. You have the smaller paisleys on the inside and then you have these larger. So if you want this imprinted, all you had to do was flip it the other way. 
And then if you wanted the smaller ones, you flipped it the other way. You made sure that these two sides were meeting on each side of your cardstock. These were the beginnings. What came in next were the double embossing folders or the two part, what I refer to them. And Cuddlebug did a lot of those. All embossing folders are very interchangeable to each of the machines. You just have to remember to play around with your sandwich. And when you figure out that sandwich, write it down because then you won't forget. Learn from me. So here, Cuddlebug came out with these dual. So you have your main one and you can see they're a larger size. These are close to the five by seven size. <clears throat> these here were your standard A2 size, four and a quarter by five and a half. This one too was five by seven as well. So you could just put a piece of cardstock in here, run this through, and then cut your panel down. You can also take a piece of cardstock, a strip, and put that into this as well. So you would get an embossed strip of cardstock um, for your panel. You can also set these up. There is a slit, or at least in some of them there was. Let's see, is this one? No, this is not one that had the slit. Only some of them did. Okay, so two separate ways to emboss your panel. This one does have a slit. So this is of chicken wire. Okay, it's a great image. And what I have done is I've set this in there and I've closed it. So what will happen is this design will go onto my cardstock. You want to make sure that you have the raised size up so it embosses, embosses into it, but it won't capture anything behind it. Again, you're going to have a dual layer here. It does work, so you might have to build this up as well. Or emboss this one through, and then you have your individual piece that you can emboss. So we were starting to get very creative when it comes to our embossing folders. Now, when it comes to our embossing folders, we really grew. We really started moving and shaking and starting to rock and roll. We started to add dies within our embossing folders. Now, this is a Sizzix one, and this one's been out for some time or I've had this for some time. I'm trying to see if the date is on it and it is not. So what this piece will do is it will emboss your card, but it's also going to cut this heart out. There is a die that's actually embedded into this piece to cut that piece of cardstock out. So you're going to get a cutout with an embossed area. Because what you have to remember is if you want to do a cutout and then have an embossed area on that card panel, you want to do your cutout first, then run it through your machine with your embossing folder. If you do the opposite, you're going to flatten, possibly, your embossed work and you would have to re-emboss it. So they kind of, Sizzix, just put those two steps together. Spellbinders also did that. Now again, these have to be pretty regular size because again, you have the die in here. But you still have to play around with the sandwich. This one is slightly thinner than this one. You can feel it. So for this one, you may be using two clear plates, where this one, you may only use one clear plate as you're, as you're doing that. And then when it cuts in, it's going to cut into this area here. So you can see these flowers are going to be cut out. So it's just embellishments when it comes to that. Recently, Sizzix and Tim Holtz have been coming out with embellishment items, borders, so here you can see the, um, the die that's built in, and this is a 3D 
level embossing folder. All right, so very thick, very detailed. You are going to get some deep results when it comes to this. Here's another one that he has. I use these in my journals to create embellishments alongside my tags or pages. And then there's a few others that he has. The 3D embossing folder has taken over. Um, it has taken charge and I'm glad <clears throat> because it's brought embossing folders back. Again, I do believe that it is one of those treasures that is just being lost. And it can, it's something at a great price point and can give such beautiful results because there's so much that you can do with that. So here are the original or the first rounds of 3D embossing folders. Okay, this one's got a steampunk. This is a wood grain. This is a brick distressed. Um, this here is got a floral design print. This is by Simon Says. And then this one here is by Memory Box Open Studio and it's got a very geometric print. So these here are extremely thick. Usually when I am running these through my machine, I am putting my metal shim down and I'm putting this on top of it. I may also add a thick piece of uh, uh, cardstock or a piece of uh, cereal box style chipboard and run that through. You do not need a lot of layers to run these through. And I run these back and forth multiple times to get the best results. And I'll show you those items, those tips and tricks that I've learned. And you'll probably see me stumble a little bit because I don't write down my sandwiches. I'm just saying. So as I'm doing these, write it down if you have a spell binders. I'm just saying. All to New then, and these are the last ones that I'll speak about, All to New then came out with their version of a 3D embossing folder. Now, these here are standard size, all right? So these are going to fit, these are six inches long by four and a quarter wide. So you will have space to trim off so that it'll fit a standard A2 size card base. Altenew has gone with a just under six by six. So it's like five and three quarters by five and three quarters, their design area. Theirs is not as thick as these, but it does take some figuring out your sandwich, but they do come in all styles. So here's a geometric one. They have been coming out with centerpieces, what I refer to as a centerpiece inside the embossing folder. And what I mean by that is, it's a floral design, as if you would stamp it or take a picture of it. So this here, all you would have to do is put a beautiful piece of cardstock in here, run it through your, um, your dye machine or your embossing machine. If you want to add ink to the top of it, you could, or maybe you chose that colored cardstock that has great uh, shadows when you do this, and simply add a sentiment and maybe some pearls if you wanted to, um, or gems. But these are already set up to create beautiful cards. This is a full background, okay, when it comes to the embossing folder. Again, same thing. This can be your background. This can set you up, and all you have to do is add that sentiment. So that is kind of the growth and the evolution of our embossing folders and how they've gone from so flat. That's what I want to say. I want to say so flat, but still detailed, still gorgeous, to the most amazing designs in detail and in texture that comes about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my die cutting machine, I'm gonna get that up here carefully, I've gotta change all kinds of things around, and we're going to run just a few of these items through. I will use one of the Altenews. I will be using one of the regular 3D images. 
And then I will also be using one of these 3D die cutting embossing folders. And then I really haven't seen these too much. So I'm sure I'm going to make a mistake and somebody's going to say, I wish you showed that. I'm sorry. And I'm going to use one of our originals. And we're just going to have some fun doing some embossing. All right. So let me grab my items and I'll be right back. Okay. So here we go. Main thing, your embossing machine or die cutting machine, whatever you're using. Again, I am using the Spellbinders Platinum 6 um, for this. So my sandwiches will be set for it. We're not going to be creating any cards here. We are just going to work with the machine. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. I'm going to make sure that's, that's set. Okay. So let's start out with the originals that's what we'll call them so i'm just going to grab a piece of cardstock this is about um, a 100 pound piece the best trick that i can give you for any cardstock that you put into any type of embossing folder is to mist it misting is the key word people misting we don't want to and have it dripping no, 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 we don't want that. What's happening when you put your paper into the folder and you run it through, there's a positive and a negative. So this positive is going into that negative to create the formation of the image. It's also breaking the fibers of the paper. So if you use sometimes when you use a paper that's really thick, it cracks and it can actually cut. If you use a paper that's too light, it kind of doesn't even take on the shape. What I like to do is use a mister, not a distress sprayer, because it can give you some big blotches. So a regular spray bottle, I happen to have the Nouveau Mist Sprayer, and I spray it once on one side and once on the other, and I'm about 12 inches away. Now I'm not gonna spray it here, and of course there's an ambulance that has to go by, um, my house. So I do apologize for that background noise and, and may the person be okay. Okay. So I'm going to spray this off camera, but you'll hear me. So we've got one and we have another one. I turned my paper over and that's it. So you can see very light. I'm going to put this in my embossing folder. I'm going to set this down right onto my platform. And for this, I am going to use the Spellbinders embossing plate. This comes with the machine. But I have my platform, my cardstock into my folder, and now this embossing plate. I also like to take my folders and turn them just a little bit so that point is there. You also want to make sure that the folded edge where it's gathered, the fold, the uh, embossing folder, that's going through your machine first. I'm gonna set this down, and I'm going to roll this through. And you'll probably shake a little bit, so I apologize now. There we go. All right, I'm only going to do one pass. And this is the beautiful image which we have. It's absolutely gorgeous. And that was one pass. And you can look at either side. This is the negative side, and the raised side is the positive, I believe. Or it's vice versa, if I'm wrong. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. The next one I want to do... And again, that's very simple. This is the appropriate plate to use. This is the appropriate platform to have, okay? I just needed that folder with the cardstock going in. What I'm going to work with next, and matter of fact, you know what? We're, let's do another one. So here I have another general one. I'm going to grab another piece of cardstock. I'm going to spray once. I'm going to spray twice on the other, or once on the other side. Again, not dripping, very light. I'm gonna put that into my embossing folder. I'm gonna make sure my 
fold over edge is going in first. I like to turn it just a little bit. Put my embossing plate on and roll her through. I can come back. And actually, when you come back, after when you do that twice, you will feel it loosen up. It's not as tight as it's rolling through. That's because those fibers are bending. When I lift this up, once again, we have beautiful image it, an image there for a background of a card. And there's just so much we can do with that. Okay, now let's work with the Spellbinders um, emboss and cut. So for this one, I have to change up my sandwich just a little bit, not much. But first, I'm going to take this. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take a piece of cardstock, spray once, flip my cardstock, spray once again. That's all I needed to do. I'm going to set this into my embossing folder and you can see all of these embossing folders are the standard size. I'm going to turn it just a little bit, folded edge going first and the pointed kind of going in there first as well. I'm going to grab a cutting plate and now I'm going to roll that through and I'm going to come backwards. And I'm going to go one more time. When I lift this out, I should have my items die cut and I should have my embossed image. And I do. So again, for the Spellbinders emboss and cut, I only needed my platform, the folder with my cardstock, and a cutting plate. That worked for me. All right, and then you have these beautiful images with the die cuts. All right, so let's now use one of these. Okay, so I'm going to grab a piece of cardstock, and I always I'm going to try to always reach or have a, a light shade of a cardstock um, so that you can always see the impression. At least that's what I'm shooting for. Just say. All right. So here I've got this one. These are of the bricks. Now these are very thick. So this changes completely. I'm going to get my cardstock prepped. I'm going to spray. Spray after flipping my cardstock. I wiggle it just a little bit. Wiggle it. Okay, never mind. And we're going to place that in there. Y'all didn't have to have that vision now, did you? Okay. Place that down. Close my folder. I'm going to now grab my metal shim. And I'm going to place that down. I'm also going to grab a piece of my chipboard. Now, this is cereal box weight. So, if you have a cereal box, save it and cut it down to a size that you like. I'm going to set that up underneath my metal shim and I'm going to place that down again <clears throat> since these are standard size I can cock it just a little bit to have that point and the fold to go in first I'm going to get that ready and I'm going to start rolling sometimes one piece of chipboard will work sometimes I have to set two and I think for this one, just because it felt really light, you can see I'm keeping pressure on my plate. I am going to set another piece of chipboard down. I'm going to put my shim there. Always put your shim on your base. See how I waved? Yeah, that's what happens when you put it on top. It actually will curl. Yeah, this is my second one. And now I'm gonna roll this through. Okay, I feel better pressure with two pieces of that chipboard, and I'm gonna go back and forth a few times. <clears throat> so this is my second, and now I'm gonna go back 
the third time. When you use a 3D plate, which is what this is, you really, if you go back and forth, you're going to find that it gets lighter and lighter to go. That means those fibers are breaking. It's digging down into that 3D folder. There's so much intricate, yeah, intricate detail into these folders. You don't want to miss. I mean, look at that. And this is just bricks. I mean, it, it's the cement. It looks like a cement brick. It's absolutely... Oh, Tim, you've done it again. It's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at it on that side. You can see all of that beautiful detail. So by going back and forth, you're actually digging it down in there. Let's look at another one. Let's do... Let's do the gears... And we'll do that in gray. Now, this is a lighter weight cardstock. I'm going to see how this does. Spray once. Turn it. Spray twice. Going to put this in. I'm going to use the same sandwich. Two pieces of chipboard. My shim. I'm going to set this on an angle. And I'm going to push this through. And I'm going to roll back and forth. Now, you can see the first time... Got a little bit of a push going on there. Got a struggle. Now I'm going to come back. Now I'm rolling a lot easier. And now I'm going to push this through again. And I'm actually going to bring it back to me as well. To me, four times is the key or is the charm for me. When I open this, look at that detail. It's like stamping with a rubber stamp. I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up because I can't see it, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Now, you have the differences in the colors because we sprayed the paper very lightly. So this will dry one solid color, but that water, that dampness kind of helps so that you can see the beautiful details. So again, for the Sizzix 3Ds and you have a Platinum 6, I can all, and there's different, there's different ways for me to do this. Sometimes I can just use the metal shim. If I'm using a very thick cardstock, the metal, sh just the metal shim will work as well. Here's what you always want to make sure. If you've got such a layer here and you've got this here and your machine is just not going to go or this is spinning on its own, do not force it. Stop what you're doing. Take something out from your layer and add a piece of cardstock or something else that will help provide that pressure. When you force something to go through and the machine is saying, no, don't do that, it just don't, you can break something. It, it's going to tell you, hey, you're about to break me. You're, you're forcing something that we shouldn't. Now, sticking with this line here, let's do one of these cut strips. I have a thin piece of scrap cardstock here that I'm going to use, and I'm going to do the same thing. Folded side going in first, two pieces of chipboard, and my metal shim. Now, you see how that, that platform's going, but nothing else is? I'm going to stop. These are a little bit thicker because of the die. I'm going to remove one of my pieces of chipboard. I'm going to set that in. I'm going to turn it, get that set up, and now she will go through. You can hear the cracking, and now I'm going to push her through again. Just one more pass. Okay. And you can see that beautiful detail on this piece. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And this is just great to put on the side of a tag, just like that, and then collage underneath it. <clears throat> okay, so 
you can see even though same company same designer difference in your sandwich one piece of chipboard metal shim two pieces of ship of chipboard metal shim all right let's move on and finally to the Altenew cleaning up my area just a little bit here so let's do this one and we will also do a full one as well now again these are five and three quarters by five and three quarters I'm still just going to use a piece of um, regular size cardstock a standard a2 size because that's what I have near me right now now I want to choose a nice color for that one I want that and for this one I would like to have this okay again spray spray to the front spray to the back I'm going to set this in into the center or you could set it off to the side whichever way you want I'm going to close that down now the sandwich that I use for this is no chipboard my metal shim my plate and I'm going to try to just angle it just a little bit make sure you're in frame there just a little bit as much as I can and a cutting plate and I'm gonna roll this through and I am going to go back and forth tight I can tell it's now loosening up and I'm gonna take it back and forth one more time your rolls the way that you're having to crank this get lighter and lighter because those fibers are breaking they're bending when I lift this up it is a beautiful image that again just needs a sentiment just needs a little bit of pigment ink on top of that and you have a beautiful card ready for any occasion you also have when it comes to Altenew I love the detail that Altenew has um, Altenew does have beautiful beautiful detail now I'm going to do one of their full panels so again spray spray going to set this down close it try to angle it as much as I can folded edge going in I need my cutting plate for this and now we're gonna roll it back and forth twice for me works the best and this shifted I can tell there we go and we can do this one more see how easy that just rolls through now that tells me that okay we're in those grooves when I lift this up we have just beautiful beautiful detail the center of those flowers is just absolutely phenomenal the daisies is just it's just great again out of sentiment and you have a beautiful card when it comes to this so I hope you enjoyed the tips and tricks that I also showed you when it comes to working with embossing folders as I said I do believe that they are an item that is lost people have set aside but I think sorry I bent down but I think they are wonderful now you might be asking remember videos that are going to come up after we go through everything we will start showing techniques and way to work with it 
if you want to see some techniques now by all means be inspired by YouTube but within my patreon group I recently just did an embossing folder five different ways actually six because I added one more those are the type of videos that are over on the patreon account so there's more become videos over there but I do like to take one item and show five different ways to make that item as well. That's one of the levels. So if you're curious, I encourage you to check that out. You do not have to. This is staying here. I'm not going to change YouTube here at all. Okay, so again, I'm not gonna list all the products that I used. I will list to stores that you can shop at. Um, some will have affiliate links associated and some will not. Um, but by all means, I encourage you to check this out. There are some beautiful embossing folders out there and so many ways that you can embellish them and make them into something more using today's techniques. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below and I will make sure I get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you're still enjoying this series. Again, this was number six embossing folders and how we can work with them and the types that we have available to us. Now, I believe seven, and I'm going to write this down. <laughs> Part seven, this is the dry embossing. Part seven is going to talk about heat embossing and everything that entails because boy, have embossing powders grown into something so much more as well. So I hope to see you in the next uh, episode. Take care, stay safe, smile, laugh, enjoy this process. There should be no frustration when we are being creative and creating our art. But by all means, always remember what's most important to me, guys. Always be creative. And until the next video, take care.